With AI advancements continuing at a dizzying pace, we all have questions about what's next in store for GPT when it releases its next version, GPT-5. Microsoft researchers have stated that GPT-4 shows sparks of general intelligence, meaning it can perform tasks generally better than humans. I wanted to know what GPT-5 is expected to be able to do, when it will be available, and crucially, if it means we can all finally move to Barbados and outsource our jobs to Clippy. Given how amazing GPT-4 was, there's a lot of excitement in the community about how good GPT-5 will be, and many have rumoured that it will achieve some form of artificial general intelligence, i.e. that it will be able to perform general tasks much better than humans themselves. So I think one of the key bits of information that really started this whole GPT-5 and whether it will achieve AGI debate was probably this tweet here by Siki Chen. So back in March 26th, um, you can see he tweeted this, it got 1.2 million views. And he stated that, I've been told that GPT-5 is scheduled to complete training this December, December 2023, and that OpenAI expects it to achieve AGI which means we will all hotly debate as to whether it actually achieves AGI, which means it will. So there's definitely some debate on the internet and expectation that GPT-5 will come with some kind of artificial general intelligence or AGI. Remember, that's the point at which these LLM models can perform an array of different tasks, such as coding, problem solving, reasoning and planning better than humans themselves. But not everyone is massively excited about this. So I don't know whether you saw, but there was a letter published about three months ago, an open letter signed by lots of notable people, uh, including Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, and also Elon Musk himself. Um, and this letter is essentially calling for a, a, a moratorium or a pause in the development of these large scale LLMs for the period um, six months from the date this was published. And I think the reason that this is important is because there's been a change in the tone in the political discourse to one that's much more cautious. So I think this kind of rhetoric that's presented in this letter here will definitely slow the pace of developments that OpenAI and others have towards the development of a real AGI. In this letter, the language is pretty strong. Um, I'll just read some of it. So basically said, um, advanced AI could represent a profound change in the history of life on Earth and should be planned for and managed with commensurate care and resources. Unfortunately, this level of planning and management is not happening, even though recent months have seen AI labs locked in an all, all out of control race to develop and deploy ever more powerful digital minds that no one, not even their creators can understand, predict or reliably control. Contemporary AI systems are now becoming human competitive at general tasks and we must ask ourselves, should we let machines flood our information channels with propaganda and, and untruth? Should we automate away all the jobs, including the fulfilling ones? So there's definitely some debate online as to whether we should be developing these kind of AGI models and whether they actually represent an existential threat to humans on Earth. Now, there's no telling whether a lot of this comes from anti-competitive or for commercial interests. I suspect a lot of it is vested interests talking. Um, but there's no denying there is some hot debate online about it. And I think the reason this is important is because I think it will shape the speed and direction that OpenAI will go towards GPT-5 and towards AGI in general. So other than AGI, what other functionalities can we expect out of GPT-5? This article goes through the various different developments that we can expect. The first is reduced hallucination. So you can see here how there's been uh, an increase in accuracy in various different tasks from learning, writing, math, etc., from GPT-2 all the way up to GPT-4. And there's a clear increase in accuracy as the model version increases. So we can expect 
increased accuracy on an array of tasks, i.e. a reduced hallucination. The article also goes on to say that we expect reduced uh, compute time, so the time it takes for uh, GPT to actually come up with the final answer, we should expect that to fall. And the next point it really is around um, multimodality. So currently as it stands, GPT-4 is not currently fully multimodal. However, we can expect more types of data. So rather than just text, we can also expect audio, image, video, and an array of different other types of input file to be supported by GPT. And the final point that they make is that long-term memory can be expected to increase. GPT-4 currently has a maximum context length of 32,000 tokens. There are other models out there such as Anthropics Claude, which has a context length significantly in excess of this. So we can expect context length or long-term memory to increase significantly. So for example, you might be able to upload full books uh, and much larger texts into, for example, ChatGPT as the version numbers tick up. So the community was expecting GPT-5 to be released around the end of this year, at least until recently. About a week ago, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, was testifying before Congress. And this is what he had to say. After we finished training GPT-4, we waited more than six months to deploy it. Um, we are not currently training what will be GPT-5. We don't have plans to do it in the next six months. So it doesn't look like we'll be seeing GPT-5 anytime soon. I think one thing that I've noticed is the tone from OpenAI is much more cautious. If you look at this recent article that they published, planning for AGI and beyond, you can see that the general tone is one of caution. So they say, as our systems get closer to AGI, we are becoming increasingly cautious with the creation and the deployment of our models. And they go on to say that, we think it's important that efforts like ours submit to independent audits before releasing new systems. We will talk about this more in detail later this year. At some point, it may be important to get independent review before starting to train future systems. And for the most advanced efforts, to agree to limit the rate of growth of compute used for creating new models. We think public standards about when an AGI effort should stop a training run, decide a model is safe to release, or pull a model from production are also important. So I think it's fairly clear that the pace of developments towards GPT-5, or at least those that are labeled GPT-5, will certainly slow down. Even though it seems fairly clear that OpenAI will slow its progress going forward towards what will be considered a full AGI, there's still lots of innovation happening on top of GPT-4. So we've recently had a bunch of different plugins into ChatGPT, such as their code interpreter, which allows you to essentially have your own data analyst. I've done a video on that before, link in the description below. But there's also now internet connectivity, which I think is huge and really puts ChatGPT more on par with uh, AutoGPT and other uh, models are able to self-prompt themselves. So even though it doesn't look like we'll be getting GPT-5 anytime soon, we are likely to get GPT-4.5, a little bit like how they released 3.5 between versions 3 and 4. So we can definitely expect more functionality out of GPT-4, probably more plugins, better accuracy, quicker compute time, and more memory. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing so I can make more videos like this one. See you in the next.